Hello there guys, this is Tosi Famadan, I'm your Warangal Biker. So today we are going to talk about the Triumph Speed 400. So should you be buying the Triumph Speed 400 in 2024? Well, honestly speaking, the answer is yes. Because there is no such motorcycle in its segment which offers the levels of quality that the Speed 400 does. So we've also got the Triumph showroom here in Warangal and I was really excited when I saw those bikes lined up inside the showroom. So proceeding with few benefits of purchasing a Speed 400, well the first thing should be the quality. What I mean to say is that though Triumph is making Bajaj manufacturing those motorcycles, these are way ahead compared to the quality of, uh, I can say, the typical Bajaj motorcycles. I mean, I hope Triumph has uh, really, uh, you know, told Bajaj to manufacture. I mean, the deal which was done between these two brands is something which was taken very seriously by Triumph because they are officially being sold across all the Triumph dealerships, including Warangal. So, the moment I saw the bike, I was just, you know, really impressed by those levels of quality fit and finish so this is an entirely different genre because the engine i believe is 398cc liquid cool dohc 4 valve and trust me it's able to do 0 to 100 in somewhere around 7 to 8 seconds if i'm not mistaken that is really impressive right and uh, you also get uh, you can reach a top speed for around 100 and 45 to 46 kilometers an hour though the indic I mean indicated speed is you know speedo indicated is around somewhere around 160 I guess so all these things distinguish this motorcycle from all the others but what about the long term maintenance of this bike well uh, you can definitely trust track because I have been observing this brand since more than 12 years, right? When I was in Hyderabad, I was in Banjara Hills and I was in the And I was in the bikes and I was in the service. And I can say that this is for like discerning like discerning customers. I mean, they are selective for the Triumph. Yeah, uh, the Speed 400 uh, looks a bit slimmer. Right? It doesn't look very broad like the Domina 400. But you know, it's really a good bike uh, with, uh, you know, a very good uh, sitting posture but the, uh, it's not like tiring or tedious right you really develop a lot of interest when you ride this particular motorcycle and uh, I've also uh, tried to inquire about few parts of this bike and you know parts ke baare hum baad ne baat karenge lekin what about the long term maintenance of this bike will Triumph leave India definitely not uh, because abhi to wo apna market jama raha hai india mein and kafi sare bikes wo launch karne wala bhi hai like the truck truckston 450 bhi shayad aane wali hai market mein and uh, you also seen uh, you know the triumph speed 400 is doing quite well matlab uh, those people you know who find royal enfields and uh, even the uh, hondas and the benellis like to be quite common in the market they are going with the triumph speed 400 not just for the brand image but also to experience a change because you know ye bike as it's like a contemporary retro motorcycle but uska engine man you know the speed 400's engine is really good very responsive and uh, you can easily tour on this motorcycle so you know many people are skeptical about the dominar and speed sharing the same engine well they are entirely different. Ha, ho sakta hai ki components ki quality thodi similar ho sakti hai, lekin both of these engines are way different, you know. And uh, dusre countries mein bhi uh, Triumph Speed 400 is doing really well. And uh, one of, you know, like uh, my subscribers, like actually was willing to ask that how does it stand compared to the Royal Enfield Classic 350. See, as uh, Mona bola, mene bola tha ki, both are very different motorcycles, Royal Enfield Classic 350 is a proper retro motorcycle, that is why it still doesn't get uh, you know, tubeless tires in most of its models, but uh, Triumph on the other hand is a contemporary retro, proper contemporary retro motorcycle, so it has all the modern features and uh, you know, in a nutshell, I can just say that, you know, if you are willing to get a more powerful motorcycle, uh, which is of a different brand, 
uh, which yeah makes you stand out definitely uh, you can get the speed 400 but uh, in terms of long-term maintenance you know I think uh, Triumph will be a bit more expensive because the parts of this bike you know they are not going to be available outside because Triumph I think it doesn't sell its spare parts to other customers so it's better you be careful if you're willing to own this bike for let's say around 10 to 12 years then you know you have to be aware about a few parts which are definitely going to be expensive I believe uh, the radiators and all this because see uh, what I mean to say is that liquid cooling system unlike air cooling is a bit intricate right so you don't you, you need to be very alert right after a certain period of time I'm not saying you'll be having problems within just one or two years of purchase probably after seven or eight years you might have certain problems like you know this is common with every brand I'm not specifically targeting Triumph that it's gonna have problems but there are certain chances that you may face certain problems for instance uh, I had a Pulsar 200 NS right after four and a half years its radiators fan I mean I just did 15,000 kilometers and its radiators fan stopped functioning and the bike got overheated and it stopped so you know it did not damage the engine but uh, since I was a heatful person I was able to literally notice what was wrong with the bike so if you're a person who literally has some sound knowledge about motorcycles and if you're able to literally find an issue within a shorter span of time then yeah you can go with that because uh, if you don't have any Triumph showroom around you it's gonna be a problem it's gonna be a hassle to take the bike to the workshop in case of any uh, you know repair or any malfunction so it's better you ensure all the things that you have a showroom near you uh, even you should be able to spend you should not be reluctant to spend money on your motorcycle right so only then you can get the Triumph or else you can go with the Royal Enfield itself and uh, I was just going through uh, the list of spare parts and a few accessories for the Triumph Speed 400 and few parts are really priced so well by Triumph that you know I've owned a Domina 400 as well I mean back in the year 2020, 21 and 22 I had it for me for three long years and uh, I know uh, the headlight grill for my Domina costed somewhere around 1500 rupees but you know I'm just reading out uh, the uh, you know accessories the prices of accessories of the Triumph Speed 400 so currently I own a Honda CB350 RS uh, Hyosun Comet and uh, you know Royal Enfield standard 350-1989 model so you know uh, the headlight grill for the Triumph Speed 400 is 543 rupees so my, for my Domina the aftermarket uh, headlamp grill was somewhere around headlight grill was around uh, 1500 rupees so Triumph ka yaha par 1000 rupees sasti hai right and the lower engine bars for Triumph Speed 400 are for 2144 rupees which are again very reasonably priced but uh, you know and the luggage rack it's uh, 2844 rupees which is again quite reasonable the radiator guard for Triumph Speed 400 is 679 rupees okay that is again very reasonably priced and the sum guard for this bike is a little expensive that is 4823 rupees and the LED indicators uh, for Triumph Speed 400 are 2664 rupees uh, the windscreen is again very reasonable 2241 rupees so these are accessories the Triumph Speed 400k and uh, a reasonable pricing hai accessories ki. And when uh, the other parts of the other parts, man, I was just surprised uh, looking at the pricing of these accessories for you, the Triumph Speed 400. The first thing is the nylon tank bag, which is 14,347 rupees, which is way too expensive. It's better to go with the aftermarket, spare, I mean, uh, you know, accessories instead of buying this. And the top box for Triumph Speed 400 is 27,165 rupees. Both these are the expensive hair. And uh, the bar and mirrors of this bike are somewhere around 7,544 rupees. That is again way too expensive. And like it's still uh, bar and mirrors, I think Royal Enfield can be somewhere around Continental, ke they are around 6,000 change. So still it's okay like in your roll bag jo hai, it's again 10,746 rupees which is again way more expensive and the body cover 
of triumph matlab ye uh, i think it is same for this uh, scrambler right and other models as well so considering the brand value it has been priced 12000 rupees okay so it's way more expensive see i have on a honda cb350 rs and uska body cover it's somewhere around 994 rupees so 12000 for a body cover is exorbitant man matlab i don't know how triumph is pricing this see when they enter the indian market they should understand that people who are willing to purchase the triumph speed 400 mostly will be mostly will be from middle class and slightly upper middle class families so body cover ko 12000 charge karna i don't think it's reasonable uh, it's always better to get uh, an aftermarket body cover for your triumph speed 400 right and uh, what i mean to say is that you know Triumph Speed 400 is really an amazing motorcycle, and uh, you know I don't need to slander it by any means. And I have seen on road price Triumph Speed 400 can go and get a Warangal Triumph. Me, uh, the Speed 400 costs approximately 2.89 lakhs on road, including accessories, and the Scrambler 400 costs 3 lakhs 24,000 rupees on road in Warangal. So now. uh certain people might be having a doubt that if they are willing to purchase a motorcycle like let's say the royal enfield himalayan 450 and this cramla 400 so or the bmw gs310 so these three bikes even the ktm adventure 250 so one might be having a bit of confusion that which one should i buy from these both like this cramla 400 or the royal enfield himalayan 450 well uh from my experience i can say that it's better you go with the triumph scrambler 400 if you have a triumph showroom around you because recently uh, you know i just got a bit more skeptical about the himalayan 450 due to the fact that a couple of uh, himalayan 450s uh, had their chassis broken uh, the cause of that is you know not literally known Uh, but you know from sources i came to know that uh, the riders they have fitted certain extra like the other crash guards and that led to you know the break of the chassis but honestly speaking there are numerous bikes which have aftermarket crash guards right so these kinds of things just shouldn't be happening right because um, you know i too had a dominar and uh, you know i really used to enjoy riding it and there are so many dominars and even other motorcycles where people fit aftermarket accessories so even for expals you know people do hardcore off roading but uh, you know i've never heard uh, the expals having the issue of uh, chassis breaking so you know let's you know uh, be more realistic so let let us uh, draw a clearer conclusion that why is royal enfield himalayan 450 having such issues okay so as of now main to yahi bolunga ki if you are willing to purchase a royal enfield himalayan ruk jaiye you know uh, let the company clarify what was actually wrong so let's get back to the main topic of speed 400 so should you be buying this instead of java and honda cb350 rs which i have well uh, being the owner of honda cb350 rs i can definitely say that uh, the tram speed 400 okay uh, that's the uh, cb350 rs is somewhere around 2 lakhs uh, 68 or 69000 here in warangal so if you're willing to go with the tram speed 400 well that is somewhere going to be around you know 269 so around 22 to 23000 rupees more expensive but i can safely say that uh, it is a better motorcycle than the honda cb350 rs and you can go with it but uh, if you're willing to have a bit of more fuel efficiency uh, and if you don't mind a motorcycle which riding a motorcycle which is a bit slower but has a better tank range and you know it is free from the intricate things like the liquid cooling system although i know it's a bit more effective in terms of performance a liquid cooling system always outperforms the traditional air cooling systems but if you're willing to get a bike which offers you peace of mind because yahan par dekhiye लिक्विड कूलिंग इंजन के साथ ये होता है कि आफ्टर सर्टन पीरियड मतलब लेट से लाइक आठ से दस या ग्यारह साल के बाद यू कैन हैव सर्टन प्रॉब्लम्स व्हाट आई मीन टू से इज दैट मैंने देखा ये चीज़ें पल्सर 200 हंड्रेड एन एस में ओल्डर डोमिनार्स में आफ्टर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम रेडिएटर 
मतलब प्रेशराइज वॉशिंग से या डर्ट से रेडिएटर्स खराब हो जाते हैं उसके साथ साथ मैंने ये भी देखा है कि कभी कभार रैट्स यू नो रेडिएटर के पाइप्स को कभी बाइट कर देते तो देर इज़ अ पॉसिबिलिटी नॉट अ गारंटी इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ यू नो द कूलेंट लीक जिस कभी कभार ये भी होता है कि होस पाइप्स में से लीक होता है तो दीज आर यू नो समाइम्स गोइंग टू कॉज बर्न अ होल इन योर पॉकेट इन फैक्ट सो अगर आप वो रिस्क नहीं लेना चाह रहे तो इट्स बेटर यू गो विद एन एयर कोल्ड मोटरसाइकिल बट ऑनेस्टली ट्राइव स्पीड फोर हंड्रेड यू नो इट्स जस्ट एन अमेजिंग मोटरसाइकिल एंड इट इज अ हंड्रेड परसेंट प्योर वैल्यू फॉर मनी एंड जब मैं मेरे सी बी थ्री फिफ्टी आर एस ले रहा था आई वॉट इट फॉर फ्यू रीजन्स यू नो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट यू टू इट्स रिलायबिलिटी आई मीन हॉन्डा इज टिपिकली नोन फॉर ऑफरिंग दोज रिलायबल इंजन एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द माइलेज एज वेल मतलब यू नो स्पीड फोर हंड्रेड का माइलेज यू गेट इट समेयर अराउंड ट्वेंटी एट टू ट्वेंटी नाइन बट मेरी सी बी थ्री फिफ्टी आर एस को यू नो इट डिलीवर्स अराउंड थर्टी सेवन टू थर्टी सिक्स इन सिटी समटाइम्स यू नो विद माइल ट्रैफिक अराउंड हाईवेज इट्स ऑलवेज फोर्टी एंड अबाव सो दैट्स इट फॉर टूडे इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन और इफ यू वॉन्ट मी टू रेकमेंड यू एनी थिंग प्लीज फील फ्री टू कमेंट डाउन बिलो show some love in the form of comments and do subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos related to motorcycles god bless you have a great time ride safe and take care this is your warangal biker saying goodbye goodbye